I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall surely rejoice and prosper in it in the mighty name of Jesus. Before we go into the words, I would like us to talk to the owner of the word, who is the word himself. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you the glory, the honor, the praise, and adoration. I thank you, mighty God, that you remain faithful. You remain a covenant keeping God, a God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. Oh, Father, we thank you that you are dependable, God. We thank you for your word that you sent to heal us and deliver us. We thank you, mighty God, for your word that you have sent to encourage us and to comfort us. Father, Lord, I thank you that even this morning you are the same God who speaks. Father, Lord, I pray that you reveal the mysteries of your word this morning. Holy Spirit, only you can make me talk, speak with the tongue of the land. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Be greeted once more again in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are on our day six of fasting. When we fasting since the 12th, today is our day six of fasting. And today we are praying for our parents and grandparents. The lady in my street, man, that today we should focus this day, dedicate this day in praying for the old, the vulnerable, who are our parents, and some of you, your grandparents. So I want you to focus on that. Pray, 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 pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. Pray that the angels of the Lord encompass around them and deliver them. Declare the word of God about their lives. Job 5.26 that they shall, they shall go to their grave at an old age as a sheep of grain repairing this season. Declare that word. Declare that word over them. Declare that word over your parents. For it is the word that giveth life. It is the word that giveth life. Declare that word over them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to go straight to the word, but before we do that, I would like to also to acknowledge that we, we are in need in our times. Maybe there are some of you who are listening to me who have lost your loved ones. I want you to know that we are with you. We are praying with you. And those who have been directly affected by COVID or indirectly affected by COVID, we are praying with you. We are praying with your families. You are never alone. We will always be praying with you. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that do not blame anyone in anything that is happening, that somebody has been reckless or whatsoever. Let us be strong and stand firm and be prayerful. Let us not allow the enemy to sidetrack us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go straight to the way now. Psalm 91. Last week Sunday we dealt with Psalm 91. Verse 1. I couldn't could believe that one verse was the whole sermon. Hallelujah. Today I would like us to, to, to go to the next verse. Psalm 91. Verse 2. But before we can do this, let us read the whole Bible. Let us read the whole, not, not the whole Bible. It is will be fun to read the whole Bible now. But let us read the whole of Psalm 91. Let us read the whole of Psalm 91. Now working with technology sometimes. It rewards you. Say, so he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
you will serve the Lord. He is my refuge, my God, and my fortress. My God in him I'll trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the smell of the foul and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and partner. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that they waste at noon day. A thousand may fall at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us, or it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high of any place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall tremble underfoot. Because they have said they are not upon me, therefore I will deliver them. I will be with I will set them on high, because they have known my name. I shall call upon them. They shall call upon me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and honor them with long life or satisfy them and show them my salvation. You can hear that I'm eating plural because I want it to be inclusive. Psalm 91 verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress. My God in Him I trust. I will say, you know, this verse, verse 2, talks about prayer. You will declare that the Lord, He is your refuge. In the secret place of the Most High God, it is not a quiet place. Hallelujah. In the secret place of the Most High God, it is not a quiet place. It's a place where you speak. Because if we don't speak, because if we don't speak, things will continue to happen. If we don't speak, things will continue to happen without our permission. In the secret place, it's a place where you are seated with God, you are telling Him things that are bothering you, things that you need protection from, and when asked, even though you are in His protection, the Bible says, I will say of the Lord. You, what, what, what are you saying? You are saying, I'm saying you are in charge of my life. When you say, I will say of the Lord. The moment you mention the word Lord, you have surrendered yourself to the Lord. You are saying, God, you are in charge. I will say of the Lord. You are saying, Lord, I surrendered my life to you. You are the Lord of my life. So what are we saying? We are saying in the secret place of the most high God, it is the place of surrender. It is the place where you surrender. So Psalm 91 is the chapter of surrender. It's the place where you go and surrender yourself to the Lord. In other words, it's the place of prayer. It's the place where you go to pray. Why? The Bible tells us in Hebrews 4, 4 verse 11. Or in, or in, or in, or let us go to Hebrews 10 23. It tells us to hold fast unto our confession. That is the reason why the psalm is saying, I will say of the Lord. He is holding fast unto his confession. He is saying, I will say to the Lord. In other words, he said, It is me who determines. What should happen? Why? I'm saying to the Lord, you are my refuge. I'm holding fast to my confession. Why do you have to do that if you are in a secret place? You are spiritually in the secret place, but physically you are in the world where it's full of chaos. So your, your, your utter and 
says, determine your environment. I will say of the Lord, you are holding on to your confession. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge. Hallelujah. Let us go to Hebrews chapter 23. Hebrews chapter 23. What does he say in Hebrews chapter 23? Oh, my system today is very slow. No, it's fine now. It's Lamb of God, you are seated, writing all the Father, you are holy, holy, wow, holy. He said, let us, let us hold fast the confession of our own without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. When you are in the second place of the Most High God, you hold fast to the confession, your confession of who your fortress is. Why? We are tempted now to confess them. We are, the, the, we are tempted now to confess sickness. We are tempted now to confess that we shall be part of the statistics. Our families never shall be part of the statistics. No, we are saying of the Lord, you are our fortress, you are our refuge. We are saying we shall hear what we say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why do we why do we hold fast to our confession? Let us go to Hebrews 4:11. Why do we hold fast to our confession? You will see the purpose of saying this, my Lord. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. 12. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing into the division of soul, Spirit of joints, marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of heart. It is the word of God that we confess that will separate us from the world. Hallelujah. It is our confession of the word of God that will separate you. As you are seated in the second place of the most high God, and you say, I will say of the Lord. In other words, say, I will say of the word, because the Lord is God, the Lord is Jesus Christ. I will say of the word in his way, that is where I am established, in his way, that is where I am separated. I might be in a place that might the, 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 the psalmist says, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand to write it. It shall not come to you. Why? Because you are separated by the way. You are set aside by the way. Hallelujah. That's why I say the, 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 the word of God is powerful and living. Divided. So it divides us. Hallelujah. In other words, what I'm telling you, child of God, when you hold fast at your confession, you are saying, I am in this world. However, I'm not of this world. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Amen. And why do you say I will say of the Lord? Because it is no longer based on our words. I want to tell you something, child of God. It is not how much you are sanitizing that we are still alive. It is not how it is not how many times you are wearing the mask that, that we are still alive. No. It is not because of that. It's because he, he who has given a good way in our lives is faithful. And if we dwell in his word, and when we say our say of the Lord, if we allow the Lord or the word of God to take over the Lordship over our lives, we are totally surrendered and protected. Hallelujah. It's because of the faithfulness of God. While we are still alive. Verse 2 is the verse of prayer. In other words, you know that as you are declaring our see of the Lord, you are not trying to get his attention. You are there already. You are not trying to get God to do something. You God is doing something already. You are walking in the belief that God is doing something because I am in him. 
you are you know that you are communing with him every day. Believe you me, he will tell you when when you say the Lord, he will tell you where to go, where not to go, what to touch, what not to touch. Why? Because he has taken over the lordship of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? Why the Lord? It's because in the Lord there are weapons that have, that, have, that have guaranteed your results. And those weapons is the name of Jesus Christ. When you say, I'm by the name of the Lord, you are saying, in his name, I am more than a conqueror. In his name, I am redeemed. In his name, I am protected. In his name, I am healed. That is why you say, I will say of the Lord. In other words, you need to always encourage yourself in the word of the Lord. As it is right now, if you look around, if you look at the statistics and everything, you will be discouraged. You will believe that God is not alive. I want to put it to you right, right now that God, our God is not changed by situations and circumstances. He remains God yesterday, today, and forever. And another weapon that we have when we speak about the Lord is His Word. I will return to the Word. So you declare the Word of God to change situations that you need to, to, to see change in this time. Speak and speak the Word of the Lord. Speak the word of the Lord unto your body. If you feel that your throat is still the enemy, you tell your throat, throat, you shall not be deceived by any virus. If you feel that your chest is closing up, you tell your chest that chest, you shall not be deceived by any virus. I am in the secret place of the most high God, and I will say of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You will have to say something. This is the place where you say something. This is the place where your faith rises up. When you say, observe the Lord, you are saying, my faith and trust is in you, O Lord. You say, I will serve the Lord. He is my refuge in time of trouble. Wow. You know, those who are not born again, they don't have a refuge in this time. It is a fact. We have the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our refuge in this time. The Bible says, Proverbs 18, verse 10. Let us go to it. Proverbs 18, verse 10. It says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. When you say it's my refuge, you are saying, in his name, I am protected. In his name, I am covered. In his name, there is life and life in abundance. And that was the righteous around you. Who are the righteous? Those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are saying, Lord God Almighty, you are not protecting me because of my words. You know, the moment you speak about righteous, just know that you have just de deleted your words. You are saying to God, I'm not protected. You are not my refuge because of my words. I you are my refuge because of the finished works of Calvary. That's the reason why I know that in your name I can run to a strong tower because I'm allowed and the righteous in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to know that you, 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 you have a refuge. Do not fear, child of God. When all others fail, He alone is the one who never fails. That's why I love the song. Never fails me yet. Never fails me yet. Why? Because when you sing that song, you know that He will never fail you. Do not look at the symptoms. Do not look at the conditions. Do not look at your financial position, whether you can afford the best medicine or not. No, it is about Jesus, who is your fortress, the one who has made you 
you're righteous. You have the right standing with God. You have every right to partake in the blood of Jesus Christ. You have every right to receive healing through the strength of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the name of the Lord is your strong tower. And the righteous run to you. They find refuge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will never fail you. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. A strong refuge. Which no one can break. I remember a story. I was reading a book. There, there was a plague in the 18 something, 18, 1800s. It was called the Black Plague. It, it was killing a lot of people. Millions were dying before they can find the vaccine. So one pastor in Britain stood at the border of his village with other villages. You will say, I've heard that this plague is killing people in other villages. I declare and decree that no one will die in my village. I'm declaring the bound of the blood of Jesus Christ. They say it's declared that people continue to die around England, but in that village, no one died. Why? One man stood and said, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him on trust. So, child of God, as you stand up and say, God is your refuge and your fortress, you are not only doing for you. Your street benefits, your village benefits, your suburb benefits, your town benefits. Hallelujah. You can declare that. You can declare that. They said the black plague was the worst kind of plague. That even Corona that we're talking about now comes to nothing. And yet one man was able to stand up and say, Jesus, you are my refuge and my fortress. Because I trust in you, I'm the pastor, this place, I speak life. You know, the reason why we are not doing this, we are watching too much television. We are believing so much in the news. And unfortunately, Christians are waiting to hear what's next. I want us to be different today. I want us to be different. As we declare that God is your refuge. As we declare that the Lord, the name of the Lord is your strong tower, the righteous run to it and are safe. Declare it with all boldness. Why? Because the psalmist said, I will save of the Lord. So it is you who is supposed to stand up and pray and declare that this is a fortress. My street is a fortress. My suburb is a fortress. My home is a fortress. My country is a fortress. Imagine if every child of God, if every Christian can stand up and begin to declare that wherever they are is a fortress. I'm telling you, before they can even roll up vaccines, the church will have defeated this pandemic. Hallelujah. Amen. Take your town. Take your spirit. Take your family. Run to them in the name of the Lord. Let them know that He is your refuge. Hallelujah. Amen. The fortress. What is a fortress? A fortress is a place that when you are inside, I'll give you an example of a bank. You cannot dig your way underneath. The concrete reinforcement has strong. I read on the news that one army knew that they were about missiles to land in the army base. What they did, they sent all their soldiers underneath the bunkers. 
to be protected against the lizards. Around six lizards landed on that Amethyst. Soldiers were under the bank, they could hear all the explosions. But those explosions were not yet them, because they were protected. When you say, God is my fortress, you can hear, you'll be, you'll be able to hear what is happening around you, but it shall not come near you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go to Psalm 125. Psalm 125, verse 2. Psalm 125, verse 2. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround his people from this time forth and forever. As the mountains surround. Imagine, your fortress is the Lord who has surrounded you. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround his people. I remember Elijah the servant. When he woke up, they were surrounded by the Philistine army. And the servant said, Alas, Master, we will perish. Legally, did you know that a spiritual fortress was set up already of the chariots of fire, the angels of God. And the servant of God prayed to God and said, Father, open his eyes. And the eyes of the servant were opened. He saw the chariots of fire surrounding them. They had the spiritual fortress. I want to put it to you this morning, child of God, that as you continue to declare this Psalm 91, and you say, My God, my Regina fortress, as you declare the angels of the Lord become your spiritual fortress. You are protected, you and your family. Hebrews 1 14 says, Are they not ministered spirits, angels, will be sent to minister to those who have inherited salvation? I want to put it to you that if you are there, you are listening to me right now, you are sick, you are not feeling very well, or you know someone who is sick, I want you to start invoking the ministry of the fortress of, of God Almighty. The spiritual fortress, which is formed by his angels and the power of the Holy Spirit. And you can all you can start declaring right now that Father, let Hebrews 1 14 manifest unto my beloved. Let the angels of the Lord begin to minister. Why? Because in your fortress, the fortress is not a desert. Once you are in a fortress, you will have everything that you need. Healing, deliverance, and power. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I'm kept by the power of God. I'm kept by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm kept by the fortress of the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe in the wilderness that when the children of Israel, of Israel, after they put their blood on the doorposts, Something was formed. My son is always telling about the first field. A first field is a place where, when I inside the first field, no bullet can penetrate, no arrow can penetrate, no bomb can penetrate. It is just a place where nothing can happen to you. I believe that when the children of God applied the blood of Jesus Christ, a first field was formed around them. A fortress was formed around them. So that even though when they walk in the wilderness, no lion was had appetite for them, no snake had appetite to bite them. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. As you continue to take Holy Communion, as you continue to plead the blood of Jesus Christ, know that there is a spiritual fortress around you and your family, and you are safe. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not fear. Do not fear. First Peter 1 5. Do not fear. There is a fortress around you. There is a fortress around you. You are protected. First Peter 1 5 says, Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, 
ready to be revealed in the last time. Our fortress, we are kept by the power of God. Through what? Through faith. You are kept, you and your family are kept by the power of God through faith. I'm not encouraging you to be complacent. I'm not encouraging you not to wear your mask. I'm not encouraging you not to social distance. I'm not encouraging you not to sanitize. I'm saying in everything that you are doing, just know that you are against by the power of God. God is your fortress. He is the one who is protecting you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us continue with Psalm 91. I love these Psalms. I love Psalm 91. There is just something about it. I remember a story of an army general. He and his platoon, every night before they go for a mission, they will sit down and read Psalm 91. He will read it aloud to his soldiers, to his men. He, he said, he went on retirement. He never lost any man in the war. He kept on declaring Psalm 91. Hallelujah. The verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver you. You know, the prophets of old used to say, Thus says the Lord. When Jesus Christ came to speak, he used the word very, very or surely because he was the assurance. He didn't say, Thus says the Lord. So even here we see, surely he shall deliver you. Child of God, your deliverance is guaranteed. Always renew your mind with the word of God. Your, the deliverance of your loved ones is guaranteed. Always renew your mind with the, love, with the word of God because he says, Surely he shall deliver you. So I want us to go and pray. I want us to pray. Surely he shall deliver you from the snow of the fowler, from the perilous pestilence. What is the snow of the fowler? Let us be careful not to be ensnared by the words that we are hearing from the media of us. Let us be careful not to be ensnared. Because the moment, what is need to be ensnared? To be ensnared, need to be trapped. Once you are trapped by what you believe, you become that which you believe. I don't want you to be trapped by your belief that you are next. I don't want you to be trapped by your belief that millions and thousands and all of them will die. I want us to be delivered by the word of God, which is a life-giving spirit. Hallelujah. You are delivered. Healing is your portion. You are in the fortress. You are in a place where nothing believe each other of God. Only if you believe we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would like us to pray as we are in our fast. I would like you to stand up wherever you are to begin to pray with me. Pray it in Psalm 91. Declaring it upon your family. Your loved ones, your colleagues. Begin to declare the fortress of the blood of Jesus Christ around your family. Begin to declare that my family is hidden under the blood of Jesus Christ. Where the devil can do the now let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, mighty God, this morning. We give you the glory, the praise, and adoration. For Father, you are faithful. 
We thank you, mighty God, for the fortress of the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the finished works of Calvary. Heavenly Father, as I plead, the blood of Jesus Christ, the covenant of God upon every person who is watching you right now. Heavenly Father, I declare and decree their safety. I declare and decree their healing upon them. I speak healing upon those who are sick. I speak protection upon each and every family. Heavenly Father, I bring our parents and our grandparents before the throne room of grace. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, only you, Father, can protect them. Only you, mighty God, can send your angels around them to protect them. Heavenly Father, our faith is in you, mighty God. We do not have any other God that we can trust in, mighty God. We do not have any other God that we can believe in, mighty God. You are the only true and living your mighty God, that it is only your mighty God who has declared through your word that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. You are the only God who has declared in your word that the same spirit that was Christ from the dead dwelt in us and that very same spirit has revitalized our mortal bodies. Heavenly Father, I declare and decree that right now. Let this same spirit that was Christ from the dead dwell in them and revitalize their mortal bodies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You declare in your word in 1 John 3 AD that for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he should destroy the works of the enemy through his blood, through the finished works of Calvary. Heavenly Father, I thank you. You also declare that the blood of the world. Father God, I pray that you release the timeless power in the blood of Jesus Christ upon our parents, upon our grandparents, upon everyone who's, who's watching us right now. Release the timeless power of the blood of the Lamb that was shed before the foundation of the world. Let them receive healing now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, you also say in your word, the Jesus Christ speaking, the blood of Jesus Christ speak better things than the blood of Abel. Heavenly Father, let this blood begin to speak life unto those who are sick. Let this blood begin to speak healing unto those who are sick. Let this blood begin to speak restoration unto those who are sick. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, I thank you. I give you the glory, Father, that indeed we overcame in Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Father, as we continue to testify, as we continue to speak your word, we thank you, mighty God, that indeed you sent your word to heal us and deliver us. I thank you, Father. I give you glory, mighty God. Heavenly Father, let your people live. We shall live. We shall not die. We shall declare the words of the Lord in the land of the living. We thank you, mighty God, that your word shall not come back to you void. Your word shall always accomplish that you purpose to accomplish and prosper in the thing that you stand into. We thank you, mighty God, that Father, you carried our infirmities and our sicknesses. It is illegal for our bodies to carry for any form of sickness and infirmities in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for each and every person who is listening to me in any hospital, in any hospital world. I say, arise, live now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God, I thank you. Let your cloud of glory, the same glory that was above the Israelites, the same glory that was above the Israelites, let it hover upon our houses. Let it hover upon our houses, bringing forth life and life in abundance. Let the same glory, let it hover upon all the hospitals where the sick are, those who are in the ICUs, those who are in ventilators. Let the same glory release life unto their lungs. I declare and decree that every lung that is damaged by COVID is repaired now in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Jesus, you are still here in your path of our bodies. Heavenly Father, I declare the great new lungs, new vital organs that were damaged by this disease in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For Father, you are a life giving spirit. I thank you, Father. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. You came so that we can have life and have it more in abundance. I thank you for life. I thank you for life. Heavenly Father, I speak. I sign level 23. Heavenly Father, I declare the decree that Father sweep with the broom of destruction our chest, our lungs, removing all forms of viruses, infection and affections. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, release the broom of destruction. Sweep mighty God and let the blood of Jesus Christ renew us, mighty God. Let the blood renew us. Let the blood give us a new list. For Father, you said in Leviticus 18 verse 11 that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Father, let the life of Jesus Christ renew us. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life. I silence every voice of death in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh Father, Lord, I thank you. I give you the glory, mighty God. Oh Lord, you are faithful. 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 We thank you for life. We thank you for healing. For by your stripes, we have been healed more than 2,000 years ago. We thank you, mighty God, that no body, no vital organ shall be deceived by the workings of this virus. I command this virus to begin to deceive itself in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every organ that was deceived by this virus, Heavenly Father, I command you, reject the deception and receive life now in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I give the glory. You are our fortress. Our God in the name of trust. You are our fortress. You are our fortress. We do not have any other God that we can run to. We do not have any other God that we know. Father, you are the only God that we know. We thank you, Father, for you are a covenant keeping God. A God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. Protect your people, Lord God. Protect your people, Lord God. Our faith and trust is in your Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. We continue praying wherever you are. We'll continue praying as we continue fasting. We are praying for you. We are praying for your families. We have deprioritized sleeping and eating. We have prioritized prayer and standing the gap for you. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God continue to protect you and your families. May the blood of Jesus Christ continue to cover you, your family, your loved ones. Wherever you go, I declare and decree divine protection upon you. Whether there is a virus or not, you shall live and not die and proclaim the name of the Lord in the name of the living. God bless you.